In June 1994, a rogue comet, Shoemaker-Levy 9, approached Jupiter. Observers on Earth soon realized that it was on a collision course. But what happened next was totally unexpected. Without warning, it split into 23 large pieces. Then one by one, these pieces plummeted into Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. Well above the surface of Jupiter, it flashed and discharged and then plummeted into the huge planet. Each destruction site was the size of Earth. The effects persisted for months afterwards. Simultaneously, a transparent gas cloud was released that enveloped the planet. For the first time, modern man had witnessed a comet collide with a planet. What was thought to be a stable solar system was now a place where the unexpected could happen. Could this have occurred on Earth? Had mankind actually witnessed such an event? Could it happen to Earth in the future? No one could now deny any of these possibilities. Very interested in the fact that um, Jupiter was found to emit radio noises because that was one of Velikovsky's predictions. And that was quite unexpected. It was time. unexpected, yeah. Mm. Cosmology is supposed to be the queen of the sciences, yet its students are taught nothing about electrical activity in the universe. They go on to make the mistake of treating plasma like a heated gas, and they talk of the solar wind, for instance, and of shock fronts. Cosmologists need to rethink their ideas about gravity. If you look at our solar system, it's a complete fruit salad. The different characteristics of the planets, their tilts, their spins, and their atmospheres, all belie the idea that this has been a natural progression from some simple beginning. And when NASA looks into deep space, we see things changing more rapidly than is expected on this kind of slow evolutionary picture. This belief in a Newtonian clockwork solar system, where what we see today in the skies you would have seen four billion years ago. But nothing could be further from the truth. The ancient skies would bear no resemblance at all to what we see today. In fact, I would guarantee that if any of us were transplanted back in time, if that were possible, that we would be frightened out of our wits. We're at the Tidbin Billa Deep Space Tracking Centre just outside Canberra. It's one of three tracking stations used by uh, the Deep Space Tracking Network in the world. There is one in Spain, one in Goldstone, California, and one here in Australia in, at Canberra. Radio telescopes are the means by which we can now trace the electrical nature of the universe because they are able to measure the magnetic fields in deep space and it has been found that these magnetic fields are strung between galaxies. They thread through galaxies and they surround the stars in galaxies. The electric universe model is based on the idea that there is a giant electromagnetic circuit connecting stars, planets, and galaxies. The Earth, via its magnetosphere, is connected to the Sun, which in turn is connected to the other stars. The, the idea of electrical activity in the cosmos flies in the face of cosmology, which relies on a gravitation-only model. This is despite the fact that NASA finds evidence day by day that gravity cannot explain. The electric force is 1,000 billion, 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 billion times stronger than gravity. Wallace and his colleagues believe we can trace the electrical nature of the universe primarily using radio telescopes. But even more evidence is coming forth with remote sensing X-ray imaging, super telescopes such as the Hubble and other remote sensing devices. But did our ancestors witness events that back up this theory? Now around the world, archaeology is a hotbed of mystery. Whether you go to South America, Africa, the Syrian plains, you find abandoned civilizations, civilizations buried under rubble, sometimes many layers thick of stratigraphy. You've got to ask yourself, what happened to these civilizations? Why were they abandoned? In comets, some meteorites are mentioned. Certainly with the demise of the dinosaurs, this has been blamed. But what about in later arenas? 
perhaps four or 5,000 years ago. Did something like this happen on a smaller scale? Certainly we don't see it today. Now we're gonna take a fresh look at archeology span and we're gonna find out what happened. Why did these people disappear? Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn wandered from their courses and produced great plasma discharges in the form of interplanetary thunderbolts. Earth too was involved in this war and great destructions occurred amongst mankind. Well, do we have evidence that thunderbolts in fact struck Earth in earlier epochs of mankind? There seems to have been a period of chaos in the solar system when cosmic lightning changed from one distinctive configuration to another. Now these patterns have been observed in recent years in high energy plasma labs. They've also been seen in deep space. They're not the puny sparks that we call lightning today.